Yes, sir. Please. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. sir. Uh, good evening uh, to all the um, attendees and uh, especially the speaker of the day, my good friend, my mentor, my well wisher, uh, long, long uh, time friend, Anil Kumar Pillai, sir. Uh, it's a really great uh, occasion for uh, all Bangalore, the people from Bangalore. Because you are so familiar uh, uh, to people of Mangalore. So you uh, are seated somewhere in Kerala, maybe Chennai or something. Still, we consider you as a part of uh, uh, you know, the Mangalore. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, coming to the, the most uh, interesting and important uh, subject of the evening, the Q3 webinar uh, series number 40. Indian Corporate Institute, uh, Mangaluru Center. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Mangaluru Center, I am uh, 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 welcoming uh, my uh, dear friend, my, uh, uh, you know, the speaker for the evening, Engineer Anil Kumar Pillai, to this gathering. Uh, welcome, you, sir. Also, Thank you, sir. I'd Thank like you, sir. to... Uh, yeah. Also, I would like to welcome all the delegates. Uh, I can see the uh, number of attendees. It is going on increasing. So, sir, Anil, sir, uh, people are waiting uh, to listen to you and your uh, guidelines. And uh, also, I would like to uh, uh, inform that probably. Uh, I also, I would like to request uh, Q3 team that uh, next webinar uh, series number 50 should be a grand gala event. So we are one more uh, uh, you know, number from uh, the big milestone that to continue uh, this one. So I would like to wish everyone uh, and uh, I would like to once again welcome all the people to this uh, evening's gathering. Thank you so much. Over to Kaushika sir. Good evening, and uh, I thank uh, all the audience and uh, today's uh, speaker, Engineer Anil Kumar Pillai sir, for accepting our invitation and coming to this webinar on the uh, different kinds of cements and their applications and how we have to choose. And I just want to I have a small introduction of uh, Mr. Anil Kumar Pillai. He is a very, very well-known figure in the cement industry. In fact, needs no introduction, but uh, many people who have gathered here, just I will introduce uh, him as a uh, formality. Mr. Anil Kumar Pillai, sir, he is General Manager Technical Services at uh, Ramco uh, Cements Limited, and he is heading the technical services of the uh, Ramco Cements uh, and then he is uh, basically a graduate from Bits Pinani, and he has done an EMBA from SP Jain Institute of Management. And he has also done operations management management from IGNO. He has also done PGDCM from Delhi Productivity Council, and he is member of Indian uh, Institute of Engineers and life member of Indian Institute of uh, Management Association. And uh, he is uh, alternate member representing the Ramco Cements Limited in the following committees, uh, which are one is uh, Cement and Concrete Section, Sectional Committee CED2, and also another one is Cement Puzzle and on Cement Additives Subcommittee CED2.1. He has been keynote speaker at many conferences organized by many professional engineering colleges, bodies, and he has conducted numerous training programs in kind of for construction professionals, not only in India, but also in uh, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and many other countries. He has been a 
very uh, he has played a pivotal role in organizing more than 150 online programs for construction professionals which can be viewed through the youtube uh, channel the ramco cements limited mays team he has published many papers he has attended many conferences the list is uh, very big more than that apart from uh, the uh, professional cement related activities uh, he is actively involved in long distance walking long distance swimming ocean swimming and uh, i understood uh, recently that he has swam in oceans more than 5 kilo, five kilometers and he has also completed marathon 42 kilometers in 4.5 hours these are uh, some um, other uh, extraordinary achievements uh, which is very rare in a construction industry or cement industry and uh, he is actively involved in training his juniors and people and uh, all the juniors and people who have worked with him are always uh, praising him for his knowledge sharing and he is always ready to help people in their knowledge building and in their career with uh, with these words i welcome you sir once again we are honored from uh, means on behalf of qcre tradimix we welcome you for this webinar thank you thank you so much so i can start the presentation so yes, what i will do is i will just uh, switch off my web camera so that uh, all of you can see the slide also uh, are you all able to see the presentation the slide yes sir yeah good evening and uh, welcome all the respected construction professionals as well as uh, thanks uh, qcrete for uh, giving us this opportunity to interact with all of you in fact qcrete india uh, you know they manufacture uh, different grades of concrete and uh, we have been interacting with them for the past uh, so many years and uh, in fact uh, that has itself been a knowledge sharing and uh, thanks uh, engineer kaushika and uh, engineer shelly fernandez uh, for taking this initiative and of course uh, engineer anil baliga who is from indian concrete institute uh, at mangalore and uh, who is a respected professional in mangalore uh, in fact uh, thanks uh, for you uh, for having uh, you know both both the institutions for having taken up this uh, initiative uh, of knowledge sharing in fact it's always better that you know we uh, we always should be in a continuous dialogue so that uh, many of the challenges that we face can be sorted out so that is the basic idea that we have got and in fact uh, this online channel has also given us an opportunity to interact even if we are not able to meet in person but of course uh, you know we always have this opportunity of uh, interacting and sharing the knowledge now today's topic uh, what i thought was that yes uh, choosing the right cement based on application because there are a lot of uh, students budding civil engineers who are there amongst the audience and uh, of course uh, senior professionals are very much aware of all this but then you know we always need to see how we can choose the right cement based on the application so before i go into the topic itself you know it's always better to look at the background uh, in the sense that uh, uh, what is the general trend that is happening in the concreting itself because we need to define the type of concrete that is being used and now before defining the type of concrete it's always better to look at the type of concrete structure you know like say for example if you look at the various kinds of concrete structures uh, we know that uh, you know structure can be of various this thing like you know you can have one which is near the shore based on the location you know you can Uh, you can classify the structures based on the location uh, it can be near the coastal area it can be in a place where there is lot of pollution you know like say for example in many of the polluted uh, places uh, it can be in different location so it's very important that we look at the location of the structure and then based on the location of the structure as all of us know we have to give importance to the various parameters of concrete that are there you know which is broadly which all of us know is compressive strength and within compressive strength we talk about the rate of gain of compressive strength 
the workability of course workability is uh, defined in different ways you know the and it is measured in different things but of course slump cone test is one of the tests but you have the flow test and all that but the thing is that again slump cone test if you see the slump you are looking at the workability you are looking at the slump retention and then we are looking at the durability so these are the broadly if you look at the parameters of concrete these are the three parameters and now based on those parameters we have to actually define in with values so first of all if you look at this uh, particular picture you will find that this is a structure which is near the coastal areas you would also find that there are some precast uh, elements which are there which needs to be lifted and then based on that also it has to be designed the compressive strength so if you look at typical this kind of structures you have the foundation you have the substructure you have the superstructure which needs different kind of concreting now this is something like you know this uh, kind of projects which we were involved with uh, uh, you know this is like where uh, you have the short creating which happens now short creating as you know would need a different kind of parameter so short creating uh, when it is being sprayed on the you know when it is being mined inside the rocks and if it has to be short created you will find that it has to go and stick to the surface so for that you have different parameters again so each type of the structure has a different parameters now this is something like you know a uh, kind of mass concreting which is happening within a thermal power station where uh, you will find that when there is a mass concreting the heat of hydration is very critical so the heat of hydration has to be defined you know many of the projects critical projects of this kind would demand heat of hydration of the concrete either the heat of hydration would be measured or the concrete temperature would be measured uh, maybe at the time of pouring maybe after some time and so this kind of parameters are being monitored now this is the typical kind of structure which we see in many of the places which is nothing but a multi storied uh, concrete building whereas all of us know the concrete has to be pumped to greater heights so when it has to be pumped to greater heights we know that it has it should not segregate and at the same time it should flow like water you know that now that becomes a challenge so here the concreting definition would be different as compared to a say conventional concrete you need to have a higher slump retention and a higher compressive strength uh, because the thing is that uh, it's going to be a multi storied building m40 m50 grade of concrete so those are the definition of the parameters of the concrete now this is something again which we go again away from the construction uh, of course this is a part of the construction this thing but if we go away from the typical uh you know construction projects we will find that there are there is something called aac block now in aac block you will find that the recipe can be different you know the, the fly ash is being added alumina is being added lime is being added cement is added but then the recipes are different now based on the recipes based on the proportion that is being added again you need to choose the type of cement that is going to go in for this kind of uh, applications so how do we go about that because you will find that there are different kind of applications different kind of uh, elements that are there now precast elements if you look at this you will find that precast is a very broad category you know you have the solid block you have the hollow block and you have the ac block hume pipes paving blocks tiles panels well rings doors and window frames and then you may have the cover blocks for that matter fly ash bricks so you will find that there are number of elements that are there within the precast industry itself and the kind of manufacturing process you will find many of this uh, blocks that you will see here you will find that uh, most of them for that matter are uh, in the you know in a typical uh, place where they actually is being controlled by people who are not uh, educated uh, you know it's a small scale industry the practices vary as far as if you look at the blocks itself you know uh, it can vary between the ratio say for example solid block can be in the ratio of 1 is to 20 1 is to 25 1 is to 30 so you will find that hardly any kind of uh, cement is there you know is more of the other materials which is being compacted and then it is taken no when you when you have a cement element in this what the user is looking at is a higher rate of gain of strength they should be able to lift the block even after one day now they 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 start the casting today and by evening they have to lift it up and then after few days they will have to deliver it so the kind of this thing that is needed is the rate of gain of compressive strength which is very important and which plays a pivotal role here 
so that is the precast uh, this thing that you will see so here the requirement of cement would be better uh, would be rate of gain of strength would be different precast panels now this is something where you know you will find that uh, many of the builders are using precast panels for various kind of construction it is easier because you can have two or more activities going on parallelly and then the precast panels can be transported to the site it can be lifted and it can be placed in position residential construction the lesser said the better it is because across the country you will find that the practices that are being followed are different now here in residential construction although they want durable concrete there are multiple options you know there can be ready mixed concrete there can be site mixed concrete and things like that now when they are using site mixed concrete if they have to mix fly ash or if they have to it can be difficult so they need to have go in for a cement which can give them durability along with compressive strength so you will find that residential construction is different and many of the critical projects that are there they will go always for ready mix concrete or they would be having a cap to plant near that but then the requirements of concrete in each of this type of structure each of these applications are different uh, so based on that you know we need to choose the type of cement that is one thing so that compressive strength the workability is one thing second thing that is uh, gaining ground nowadays we have seen many of the project personnel and many of the consultants are looking at this criteria very seriously the durability criteria and as all of us know when we talk about durability we are talking about the lifespan of concrete structure now different structures can have different lifespan which is designed it can change this is just a typical value it need not be this values itself you will find that many of the critical structures like say for example the nuclear power structure may be having a lifespan much more than this because uh, or say for example the requirement would be different a critical this thing so the lifespan would be different for each type of structure so keeping the lifespan in view the durability criteria can change so each of the structure nowadays we have seen the consultants are bringing about different criteria in terms of various measurement this thing that are being uh, you know devised or being specified in the tender like some projects you will find that they would be having this kind of test what we call the standard water permeability test of course it is written as din here but then as all of us know there are indian standard codes also for uh, you know measuring uh, the permeability test the uh, the guidelines are given there where the concrete specimen can be either cubes or it can be cylinders but typically for the, in the indian context we normally use cubes and you will find that the water uh, you know it is actually what what happens is that in water permeability test you will be having a definite pressure you know it can be 5 bar it can be 10 bar or whatever it is and then if it is passed through the specimen there is a particular value and most of the time logically if you look at the value it should not be more than the cover to the reinforcement bar because the moment the water permeability is more than the cover to the reinforcement bar there is a problem of corrosion so you will find that it is typically less than the cover to the reinforcement bar so again some of the projects recommend the usage of water permeability test they are using it also some of the critical structures uh, in which they have their own uh, uh, values of pressure that has to be given to the specimen and for how long so these are some of the durability criteria that this is of course the rcpt test rapid chloride penetration test uh, which again measures the permeability of concrete specimen so you will be having a typical specimen and then you have the naoh and nacl solution on either side and then based on the charge that is passed through the specimen you are going to measure the permeability of the concrete so these are some of the uh, test that are there for evaluating the durability of concrete and as all of us know that uh, many there are some structures we have seen that they say that we want 1500 coulombs and it has to be higher compressive strength now that is the, there where you know you have challenge in selecting the right type of constituent for such a concrete now imagine that you want a durability value measured through rcpt as 1500 and a higher compressive strength both together it can be quite challenging so that is where you need to have 
uh, the kind of trials that we do at site, you know, when you will find that the concrete has to be different from the conventional concrete. Now, this is something which uh, we have seen again, a test which we call the shrinkage crack test, the ring test that we call shrinkage crack ring test apparatus, where the where the probability of cracks in concrete can be measured. You know, it uh, the testing it is to identify the potential cracking risk of concrete and mortar mixtures. That is what it is being used for. And it consists of steel ring, but acts as a restraining support around which concrete is poured. When drying concrete, it tends to shrink and movement is restrained by steel rings. So it generates the tensile stress in concrete. So this actually this test is what because you know based on that you can always measure the difference in the change in the this thing by using the dial gauges. That is what you will find. See these wires and all are there. It is being and the uh, the shrinkage is measured and based on that the probability of the crack that is going to occur in such a kind of specimen is observed. So this is the shrinkage screen, uh, crack ring test apparatus. So these are some of the durability. So you would have seen that when we look at concrete, we are looking at compressive strength, we are looking at workability, we are also looking at durability as the major criteria. Now this is what we typically do based on our experience with uh, interaction with various construction professionals. As all of you know that uh, we as an organization typically interacts with various kinds of professionals. So normally you will find residential buildings which which is having the majority of them and there the first and foremost thing if you go and enquire the grade of concrete many of them would not be aware the unorganized construction sector that is there in many of the places you would have seen they would either go in for a nominal mix you know it can be either uh, you know many of them have started using one is to one and half is to three because m20 grade concrete has to be used at least you know that is the minimum grade of concrete as all of us know Workability, slump is 60 to 80 mm and compressive strength, three days, seven days, 28 days, most of them measure. But the challenge here is that many of them, as all of us know, go for volumetric batching, which can be quite erroneous at times. And even here also, residential buildings also, we need to look at the exposure conditions, which is mentioned in IS456. And uh, many a time we will find that uh, the water cement ratio or the cement content that has to be there is not being followed. So when you look at residential buildings, what kind of cement could be better is the, the thing. You know? So there if you are going in for a site fixed concrete, I think typically most of them go in for a blended cement, mostly PPC cement where they can get both the rate of gain of strength as well as durability and uh, you know things like that. So they go in for that based on the requirement. Now, if you go for projects, of course, it can be different because in projects, you will find that there is facility for blending cementitious material at site. Uh, grade of concrete can vary. Uh, you know, many structures, as all of us know, uh, can have different. Things. So, workability, again, it is being monitored. Slump after 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120. Again, here, the basic thing is that how does the cement you know behave with chemical admixtures because this kind of workability or this kind of slump retention cannot be obtained until unless we use chemical admixtures at site and one of the key requirement is that the cement has to be compatible with admixture admixture has to be compatible with the cement both has to match each other and the cement has to be mostly from one source so that you know you get that uh, compatibility constant throughout the project that is one thing and even if the cement and all materials are from the same source what is important is the trials has to take place on a daily basis and that is what some of the projects where the quality control is very stringent does it so that they don't go in there is no surprises at all and compressive strength after one day three days seven day 28 day type brand and dosage of chemical admixtures special requirement like whether it is self-compacting concrete AC sheet manufacturing and all those you know, high one day strength points. So the thing is that based on all these requirements, you know, the type of cement is decided. And again, you will find that the exposure condition and the type of concrete structure that is constant and that needs to be taken into account. So typically, if you find the projects kind of thing, we have seen that normally where they can get blending materials, good quality blending materials, if they can procure, it is basically ordinary Portland cement 53 grade, 43 grade in some of the 
government structures is being procured now if you look at say for example non structural applications again the requirement of the product has to be different you know in a typical cement we see that we look at compressive strength we look at uh, setting time we look at all those parameters but any product which goes in for non structural applications which is plastering and brickwork which is the major uh, which is also one of the major component in a structure there what we need to do is that we need to have parameters which is different from that of concrete in which you know you have the air content percentage water retentivity we need to measure this of course we are not measuring for concrete that is not required for concreting cement that is being used for concreting whereas one which is used for plastering or brickwork we need to look at air content and the ability of the mortar to retain water into it pull out strength that 7 day 28 day strength is under this thing flow as per flow table test and the bulk density so you will find that the parameters that is being mentioned here is basically customized for the plastering as well as the brick so plastering if you look at it we are not uh, so much concerned about the compressive strength as much as the adhesion strength so that is which is measured through pull out strength so if you look at pull out strength it has to be minimum you know around 1 to 1.5 mpa is giving a sufficient pull out for those uh, kind of non structural product and flow has to be higher uh, because if the flow is higher if the water retentivity is there if the air content is there you will find that it has got higher workability and it is able to cover a larger area thereby uh, giving a higher coverage area so basically you look at such product which is used for plastering is that it has to uh, spread over a larger area so that is where the parameters also has to be based on that now across uh, other countries also you will find that the type of cement that is being mentioned uh you know there would be some normal type of cement then there would be some modified type of cement where the heat of hydration is lower it can be this this you know you will find in the astm standard or uh you know different global standards you will find that a particular parameter is given importance you know it can be either heat of hydration it can be either rate of gain of strength uh you know again you have the low heat cement sulfate resisting cement and things like that. so if you look at the indian context for that matter you will find that there are different types of cement we all are aware of this but it is very essential that we look at the parameters that are there to understand you know how it uh, is different from each other just a kind of revisiting the fundamentals when we look at it this is as per the bureau of indian standards code itself and if you look at the indian standard code it is just a guideline and uh, based on the guideline based on the limiting values you will find that there are various types of cement you have the portland porcelana cement as per is 1489 portland slag cement as per is 455 opc 4353 as per is 269 and you have the src cement now these are the type of course there are other types of cement also are there but then you will find that broadly these are the types of cement that are being specified so you'll find that as far as ppc is concerned the fineness is much higher as compared to other types of cement because when you add a cementitious material it has to gel with uh, you know it has to have a higher uh, reactivity the lime reactivity and all so i think fineness has to be higher for that initial setting time you will find that broadly it is the same the limits are the same for all types of cement the idea of showing this particular this thing is that there is a, a misconception that with the type of cement you know the setting varies of course the setting can vary when you but as per the codal specification is concerned the specification is the same why this is being pointed out is that there is a this thing perception that the specification for 53 grade would be you know a higher uh, qca setting time would be specified as compared to 40 which is not the case of course when you manufacture a cement we can always make it like that but then the limits doesn't specify that lee chatlier and our autoclave test again to evaluate the durability of uh, the soundness of cement for that matter again you will find that overall the values are the same 3 day 7 day 28 day strength the limits of uh, ppc psc ordinary portland cement 43 grade again you will find that it is between 43 to 58 and uh, this has the minimum value of 53 mpa 53 grade and then this is what src you will find the rate of gain of strength is so these are the physical parameters that is mentioned as far as the test certificate goes now you will find that uh, there is 
uh, you know some of the projects they go in for opc 43 grade instead of opc 53 grade without realizing that uh, you know they, they think that the heat of hydration is lower in case of opc 43 grade whereas the heat of hydration value itself is not mentioned uh, as far as the cement test certificate is concerned so if you have to go for a lower heat of hydration we either one has to go for blended cements or the cementitious materials which is being added into ordinary portland cement so that those are the uh, options that are available now of course uh, many of them don't go and look at the chemical properties but then there are certain chemical properties are also which is mentioned in the cement test certificate as all of you can see uh, you will find that lime saturation factor of course it's only for opc 43 53 as well as src cement and insoluble residue again uh, you will find that there's a formula based on the addition of fly ash there is a limit where x is the percentage of fly ash that is being added then four percentage five percent these are the insoluble residue magnesia and all these chemical parameters that are the sulfate sulfur which is only there for uh, psc cement whereas that is not applicable for any other type of cement tricalcium aluminate again there is a limit as far as sulfate resistant cement is concerned now this limit of uh, tricalcium aluminate again you know is only there for uh, src cement because src cement is uh, generally recommended for areas where there is a high concentration of sulfates only now if there are chlorides along with sulfates then src cement may not be the best bet in those cases because src cement since the tricalcium aluminate is restricted, it can be weak in resisting chloride. So this is something that we need to look at. Whenever we specify SRC cement, we need to be very clear whether the area, it can be either the soil or it can be either a structure near the water, is higher predominantly in sulfates. OPC 53, if you see, Again, the chemical parameters doesn't talk much about this other than, you know, this kind of thing. But the thing is that when you are adding a cementitious material and a chemical admixture, I think OPC 53 is what, which is recommended mostly in projects. OPC 43 is, we have seen OPC 43 is specified, but then the requirement is that there are higher grades of concrete. You know, the one wants to have a higher grade of concrete without realizing the fact that uh, in IS specification, you will find that there is an upper limit of 58 MPA for OPC 43 grade. So these are some of the things. So we thought that uh, an idea, a look, relook into the specification of cement helps. So it has to be, you know, looked from that way. So these are some of the parameters you could see. Of course, if you look at the cement uh, manufacturing process broadly, this is how it happens. The component elements, as all of us know, from the elemental level, it is uh, oxygen, SI, silica, calcium, aluminum, iron, and oxide. This thing, it is calcium oxide, silica, alumina, and iron oxide. Then the compounds are formed, whether it is tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate, tricalcium aluminate, or tetracalcium alumina ferrite. Then you have the Portland cement of various types. 43, 53 grade, the hydration product, CSH gel and calcium hydroxide. Now, this is where, you know, the hydration product, that is where basically you will find that uh, uh, most of the cement chemistry dwells upon, you know, the CSH gel. If the ability of CSH gel, formation of CSH gel is higher, as all of us know, then the durability is much better. And uh, the ability to consume calcium hydroxide, if it is there, it is all the, it is all the good. Because if you have more of free lime, it affects the durability of concrete, you know, especially if you look at ordinary Portland cement without any cementitious material like fly ash or slag, you will find that the calcium hydroxide generated is much higher. So that calcium hydroxide has to be consumed and the CSS gel has to be much more, uh, you know, it has to be there in greater quantities. Then only you will be able to have a concrete which is much more durable. So basically the cement chemistry, you will find that is, these are the basic fundamentals as far as and based on this only you will find that uh, varieties of cement are being manufactured and uh, this is what uh, i was just mentioning about that the sulfate environment if it is predominantly sulfate go in for src but uh, if it is chloride is there it will give less resistance so if sulfates and chlorides both are present src cement can be 
should not be used and must not be used because it cannot resist the attack of chloride. So you can go in for PPC cement. In case of sulfate and chloride environment, PPC gives better resistance because of low permeability, less carbonation, and improved pore refinement with age. Of course, the CSH gel and all comes into picture there. So, and even the ultimate strength over a period of time, you know, uh, the concrete which gains strength, you will find that basically it is a blended cement. So, so this is the fundamental on which the durability of concrete is uh, there because the ability of the three fluids to get into the concrete, we uh, carbon dioxide, you know, we talk about carbonation, oxygen, the ability of these three fluids to get into the concrete is what determines the degree of durability of concrete structures. Of course, the weather conditions, you know, the concrete temperature is measured in most of the cases, the cement temperature. So again, the weather also has an effect on the type of cement or the concrete that is being selected. So basically what happens is that ultimately, if you see, it is the properties of concrete that has to be defined beforehand uh, so that the type of uh, cement can be, uh, you know, decided upon and the weather conditions in which the concrete is, is going to go upon. Of course, the method of testing cement, uh, as all of us know, uh, you know, we need to give in the laboratory, two or three laboratory, especially for critical structures, you'll find that there can be minor variations based on the method of testing cement. So the testing cement has to be done as per IS, the relevant IS code, IS4031, various, uh, uh, this thing is there for each kind of test. And of course, uh, you, you know, the, the task does not stop uh, by just selecting the type of cement, the quality of other ingredients, variation in NC of cement, normal consistency of cement, again, you know, determines many a times you will find that NC of cement is measured to see how much of, uh, you know, it gives you a, a broad idea of the water requirement or maybe the kind of uh, admixtures that has to be used or things like that. So. So these are some of the this thing where uh, the concreting applications and the weather conditions. So each of the customer segment, what we have seen, you know, they use the cement for various applications. In case of residential individual house builders, you'll find that the concrete goes and uh, even the plastering work, brick work. So in a typical structure itself, you may need various types of cements uh, for the construction. Like say, for example, uh, we have seen that there are customers who would like to have a concrete uh, with a higher rate of gain of strength as well as higher durability. So that is where, you know, we go in for the customized uh, Portland Puzlona cement. We, we improve upon uh, what is measured, uh, what is given in the IS code. So much more than that. So that is where, uh, you know, especially for concreting, high rate of gain of compressive strength and low heat of hydration is what is required. And of course, because of low heat of hydration, as well as uh, if it is having the ability to consume calcium hydroxide, you will find that uh, there is something called, uh, you know, you have the better of both the worlds. And when it comes to plastering works, brick work, there are places where even OPC 53 is being used for such applications, which must not be the case because uh, OPC 53 is uh, not suitable for plastering or non-structural work. So within the same residential construction, you will find different types of cement can be used based on the type of concrete that one wishes to have it. And of course, the infrastructure projects, again, as uh, all of you would be aware, different kinds of projects have different requirements, and that is a challenge. You know, you have the bridges, you have the flyovers, which we were talking about, tunnels, pre-stressed concrete applications, when it has to be stressed and things like that. Uh, again, pre-stressed concrete application, uh, there has to be a high degree of uh, quality control wherein the concrete of high rate of gain of strength is required. So, you know, many of the places they will, as all of us would be aware, they look at the compressive strength at the early ages. Then the mass concreting works, of course, PPC, PSC. So, these are normally, if you look at uh, this kind of this thing, this is what uh, yeah, in infrastructure projects, the basic uh, types of cement that is being specified. So within infrastructure projects itself or critical projects for that matter, like nuclear power projects, you will have additional requirement as I was mentioning about the durability, uh, various kind of tests. And even in some of the projects, I think, uh, you know, a couple of days back, we even saw in NHA project for that matter, 
they were looking at the durability value also even you know in the che project some of the projects have also started looking at durability values from rcpt tests and uh, the compressive strength so both has to be there so that is something which is very challenging for the concrete technologists to have it on a regular basis of course this is what uh, we were talking about one thing you will find that when it comes to precast segment the traditional hollow block segment or solid block segment they are looking at the higher number of blocks along with smooth finish and ac blocks and things like that so of course ready mix concrete units of course cucrete uh, have done so much uh, work in this area and you will find that uh, you know with specific requirement again we need to have some kind of specific cement for that where of course compatibility is one of the major criteria cementitious material sometimes uh, two cementitious materials also can be used based on the requirement and uh, based on the durability criteria because when you use a cementitious material uh, it can be useful even for higher grades of concrete because as all of us know the maximum cement content that can be used for any grade of concrete that is specified in the code as per the guidelines is 450 kg per cubic meter beyond that one can use cementitious material so that is one thing structures near the seashore marine structures again needs specific attention uh, you know especially if it is uh, both sulfate and chlorides are present of course in areas where sulfates alone is present so we have seen that uh, many a times uh, without testing itself it is assumed in many of the places that sulfate alone would be present so why not going for src cement which can be quite dangerous at times so because src cement as i was mentioning may not be effective in uh, resisting uh, the attack of chloride so this is uh, we thought that uh, we would just give an overview on the type of cement that can be used for uh, various kinds of uh, customer segment application of course this is not the end to it there can be number of customizations uh, that that is possible but the thing is that uh, you know when you go in for too many customizations the thing is it is not only cement that is playing a role uh, you have the other ingredients also like say for example if you look at uh, higher grade of concrete you know the grading of aggregate plays a critical role m60 m65 and all that you would have seen that uh, many of us are aware that apart from the quality of the cement it is the grading of aggregates that uh, plays a vital role and we have also seen many of the precast elements also if you introduce one more aggregate size let's like say for example 12 mm or stone dust is there you have the 6 mm and uh, down and if you have the grading of aggregates which is proper we have seen that there is lot of difference as far as the quality of the mortar or quality of concrete that is being used for various precast panels is concerned so it is not only the cement that is important it is the quality of other ingredients but then this the idea was to show that before we determine uh, or specify the type of cement it is very important to define the type of concrete the properties of concrete the kind of testing that is going to be there as far as this is concerned so this was something we thought that it would be useful uh, of course uh, if you look at the indian cement industry indian cement industry is the second largest uh, producer of cement in the world of course after china and uh, the manufacturing process and all that uh, you know the type of process uh, it has gone from the wet to dry and then there has been lot of developments so the kind of technological advances that has been there in the indian cement industry is phenomenal you know lot of uh, uh, changes have been brought in lot of uh, technological development the latest technological development that is available in the indian cement industry that is available elsewhere has been brought into the indian cement industry so indian cement industry has grown over the ages and it has the capability you know you will find that uh, we can manufacture various types of cement for various kinds of applications so that is the strength of uh, the indian cement industry and the tramco cements we have been able to do that we have been able to customize uh, different cements for different applications and uh, so that's it uh, so i think uh, i would not uh, take much of the time because uh, this is a time when you know all of us know that uh, i don't so i shot this thing on different types of cement for different applications was what was my objective so that's it
thank you for uh, a very patient listening and uh, any quick questions or any kind of uh, comments feedbacks and i am sure that uh, the audience uh, it has touched almost 350 and uh, nice to see all the construction professionals at this point of time because this is not the time when we you know talk about a uh, lot of technical or lot of uh, things on construction industry but then nice to see many of you from the construction industry from uh, the building industry uh, building material industry as well uh, because uh, it is through this dialogue you know that we can create lot of solutions you know this kind of integration is what uh, helps us say for example you we would be having various challenges you know it could be uh, cha- you know like a re- repair and rehabilitation of concrete structures wherein you know different inputs are required and this kind of dialogue i am sure would help us so thank you so much so over to you uh, any kind of questions that has been there uh, because i am not able to see the chat session here uh, yes sir we have got a few questions yeah please uh, sir i'll read out one by one yes please the first question is uh, which cement is more suitable for off structures as the concrete is simultaneously subjected to both sulfate attacks and chloride attacks and it was asked by dr b kamesh rao sir yes now one thing is that uh, a proper analysis of soil or water is what is required so if it is predominantly sulfate more concentration of sulfate it is better to go in for src cement but as he was saying both sulfates and chlorides are there it is recommended that one goes in for blended cement and uh, you know it can be either ppc or psc and when you look at the blended cement the advantage is that we need to check the impermeability of the concrete structure that is where is uh, what is important so if we, that is why i was just talking about the various uh, methods of evaluating durability as well uh, so it is always preferable that one goes in for blended cement either ppc or psc and if you are getting opc 53 and if you are getting a good source of fly ash or slag which is available one can blend it at site itself that is another option but then one needs to be very careful about the kind of uh, cementitious material that is being added at site with various percentages that is there so i think uh, the suitable cements are blended cement either ppc or psc uh, thank you so much sir the next question is asked by mr vinay kumar s and the question is in addition to strength and durability parameters we need to consider sustainable and eco friendly criteria also at that time which type of cement is most ideal to be used yeah i think that is a very important question because uh, sustainability and eco friendliness has become the order of the day and uh, as all of us know uh, we have a major role to play in the construction industry itself and that is where the role of uh, cementitious material comes into play one is when we look at uh, sustainability one and uh, eco friendliness apart from the usage of blending materials what is important is the life span of concrete structure if suppose the life span of concrete structure is high or uh, you know if it is more by itself it is more durable so durability gives a longer life span so viewed that way i think the blended cements again Uh, will score over because if you only use ordinary portland cement 53 grade one thing is you have a high heat of hydration you have the free lime that is coming about so i think uh, you know that that would not be a wiser choice uh, of course many many projects are there which only specifies ordinary portland cement uh, because earlier we were used to that but now uh, because of the kind of works that has been done the research work as all of you know because of lower heat of hydration uh, denser gel formation lower free lime blended cements are the choice for uh, eco friendliness as well as sustainability uh, thank you so much sir uh, the next question is sometimes we find differences in initial and final uh, setting time of cement when we test cement so does this add to variations in strength of concrete and this was asked by center okay now the thing is that yes setting and strength are two different things because setting as you all know is being measured by the vicat apparatus and uh, setting time 
the range is being given between 30 minutes to 600 minutes the initial setting time of 30 minutes to final setting time of 600 minutes so any value that can be there so normally you will find the initial setting time of cement would be anywhere between 100 to 160 or up to 200 minutes final setting time would be between 200 uh, there can be an overlap you know uh, it can be between 200 to 300 minutes so the setting time has to be measured in the proper manner because the amount of water that is being added during the time of you know when you talk about setting time of cement i'm talking because setting time of cement is different from setting time of concrete and uh, you will find that different uh, procedures are there because setting time of cement can be accurately measured setting time of concrete is a much more cumbersome process so setting time of cement even if it changes between these values you will find that setting time is different compressive strength is different so Compressive strength again is measured through the compressive testing machine, as all of us know. So the rate of hardening. So when you look at a typical cement mortar, you'll find that as you add water, it is fluid in the initial stages, and as it changes, it will slowly gain strength. It hardens, and then that's how the rate of gain of compressive strength happens. But setting time can be 150 or 200 minutes, and the compressive strength can be higher. So there is no correlation between that. Uh, of course, it should not be, you know, too much beyond, uh, say, for example, 300 minutes or something. Uh, so both are different uh, from each other. The testing procedures are also different as far as setting time and compressive strength is concerned. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Next, we have a question asked by Mr. Ramakrishna from Vishakhapatnam. And the question is, if yeah. you are given a choice between PPC and PSC, for a residential building, both are priced same. Which would you prefer and why? That's a very difficult question because the thing is that both are blended cements. Uh, so it all depends on, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, many applications of concreting where we saw that uh, the user wants a faster rate of gain of strength. So uh, as far as PPC and PSC is concerned, if you look at the typical Indian standard code that is mentioned, you will find that PPC is having a limit of ply ash addition between 15 to 35 percentage. Whereas in case of Portland slag cement, one can go up to 70 percentage also. So the percentage of addition of cementitious material can be higher in case of slag cement as compared to Portland Portland cement. So if your requirement is that the concrete has to set faster and also has to have a higher durability, both both has to be taken care of because we have seen that many of the residential uh, users or the concrete users in residential segments wants the concrete to set faster and at the same time have a higher durability and both the properties has to be balanced. So in that case, I think Portland Postal Cement can be a choice. But in case if you are willing to wait for a longer time and if you are, because if suppose assuming that you take a PPC with 35% ply ash, you take a PSC with 70% slack, of course, the rate of hardening or the rate of, uh, you know, would be slower in case of Portland slack cement with a higher addition of slack. What happens is there can be a delay in setting, but the strength would be the same. But uh, if suppose your criteria is that, yes, I, you know, your customer may want the concrete to set faster and harden faster and at the same time have a durable concrete, I think you can go in for Portland Postland cement if that is the choice. But if you're willing to wait uh, a little bit more, you can go in for Portland slag cement. So whether you're using Portland slag cement or Portland Portland cement, both have the advantage of having a higher durability. That is the key point. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is, in PPC cement, generally, what is the amount of fly ash it contains? And that was asked by Mr. Alex Joseph. In uh, Portland, Pozluna cement, uh, as per the codal provision, it is between 15 to 35 percentage uh, is what is specified. But normally you will find that uh, manufacturers add anywhere between 20, 25, 27 percentage so that you get a balance of both. You know, a durability as well as the rate of gain of strength can be achieved. But the codal provision is between 15 to 35 percentage. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, the next question is, can we use different cements in single raft pour? And that was asked by Mr. Mohan Kumar. Different cements. 
different uh, i think uh, if it is different types of cement uh, then you may have to change the mix design according to that you can use it if it's different brand of cement or different types of cement then you'll have to look at the mix design and may uh, you can change the mix design accordingly but it's always ideal to have the same type of cement to be used in one structure uh, thank you so much, sir. Next, we have a question asked by Mr. Vijit HP. And the question is, which cement is better for re-strengthening of concrete in older buildings? For restoration of, uh, I think that there, it all depends on the properties of mortar that you have. There you will be able to get, you know, the special type of cement that may have to be used. It is based on the quality of mortar or quality of repair and rehabilitation that has to take place. So it all depends on that. Uh, normally, ordinary Portland cement can be used, or you can add some kind of uh, polymers. You know, there are uh, different kind of additives that has to be added based on the requirement for repair and rehabilitation because that is a entirely a special uh, area altogether. You know, depending on where you need to. So there we cannot tell a specific type of cement. No, you will have to add some kind of additives also along with the cement. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Next, we have a question asked by Mr. Jerison Sakriya James. And the question is, how the different types of cement performances in shrinkage test is the results based on drying shrinkage or autogenous shrinkage? It's based on uh, autogenous shrinkage only. Because the drying shrinkage, of course, you know, different types of cement can behave differently based on the kind of material that is being added. But nevertheless, all the cements that you will, will be having some kind of shrinkage property. So that is why we always recommend uh, curing. Uh, so curing has to be there because different types of cement are having different. Uh, so this is basically the shrinkage ring test is basically based on, uh, you can say, autogenous shrinkage. And uh, that 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 actually gives you an idea about the probability of concrete cracking at a future date. Okay, thank you so much, sir. The next question is: Can we use blended cement along with fly ash and GGBS blends? And that was asked by Rishikesh Prayag. Uh, can we use blended cement? Yes, because uh, when you are buying, when you are uh, adding some kind of blending material in blended cement itself, it is better to know the percentage of fly ash already added in that cement. And then maybe you can take a choice at that time. You know how much it can be added, but then you need to know how much percentage of fly ash has been added in the blended cement. Normally what happens is that ordinary Portland cement 53 grade is being used for uh, blending, uh, is used for blending with either fly ash or slag. That is a normal procedure. But then if you're uh, knowing how much percentage of fly ash is being added in the blended cement uh, in PPC, then you can go in for addition of other blending. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, next, we have a question asked by Niveta B. And the question is, when admixer is used, the suggestion is to go for OPC 53 but why its application is given for non-structural components? Uh, can you again get me the question? What is that? Sure, sir. Uh, when admixture is used, the suggestion oh. is to go for OPC 53 grade, but why its application is given for non-structural components? No, no. It is like, you know, when you talk about uh, admixtures, uh, admixtures can be of various types, you know. Uh, it can be super plasticizer wherein you know, we normally use for ready mix concrete or for transporting concrete at a greater distance but admixtures can also have other functions apart from giving a plasticizing effect or slump retention effect it can be used for some special requirement so if suppose you are adding some kind of uh, additives for increasing the bond strength of the non-structural applications then it can be used for non-structural application. So it all depends on the function of admixture for which it is being used. So nothing like you know, uh, addition of admixtures is only can be used for uh, non-structural applications. Super plasticizers, uh, admixtures which are super plasticizers are also being used in concrete. 
thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is, in flyovers and metro bridges across the polluted river stretch, what types of cement should be used and mix design and what are the mixed designs normally used there? And that was asked there, by Dr. Samir Vyas. See, there in those cases, uh, as I was telling, that many of the structure would have both requirement of compressive strength and durability criteria both, in which case you can add blending material. So as far as the mixed design is concerned, yes, based on the grade of concrete, normally you will find that it should be M50 or M40 and above is normally being used. So based on uh, the slump requirement and the grade of concrete, one can go in for the mixed design because even for the same structure, you will find that uh, with the changes in workability and with change in strength, the mixed design can change. But normally it is used M40, M50 grade of concrete. As far as the type of cement is concerned, typically you will find that, uh, yes, many of the flyovers, you will find ordinary Portland cement 53 grade is being used along with blending material. Because normally such projects would have the facility of blending the fly ash or slag along with OPC 53 and then using it for flyover project. And of course, admixtures are also being added. So when you have an element of admixture, you have an element of blending material, you have an element of cement, you have aggregates all brought together, maybe for M40 to M60 grade of concrete. Sometimes if it is going beyond M60 also, you will find that silica fume is also being added. So the mix design will vary depending on, you know, there is no one mix design that can be specified. It all depends on for how long the concrete has to be transported and what is the grade of concrete. And uh, of course, the durability criteria is also there. That's what I was just telling, that uh, this typical structure where we were interacting, the concrete technologist was asking us, you know, what kind of mixed design can give us 1,500 coulombs as measured by RCPD. But then again, this rapid chloride penetration test also has its own limitation. It cannot be used for some of the, it may not give the correct values. So you may have to take care of two or three durability tests. So based on that durability test, can I get 1,500 coulombs after, say his criteria was I think seven days or 28 days, I'm not very sure. I think after 28 days, 1,500 coulombs after 28 days and at the same time, I need to have an M50 grade of concrete. Now, if you are having such kind of criteria, especially in areas where the structure is subjected to carbonation or chloride attack or maybe sulfate attack and things like that. So I think uh, there one can go in for this kind of uh, blending material addition as well as a higher grade of concrete, uh, taking care of the workability and durability all put together. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, now we'll take up uh, one last question and the remaining questions we'll send it to you, sir. Yeah. And the uh, question is when we have very few scope of uh, scope for curing activity which type of cement is most suitable unfortunately let me be very frank all types of cement that is there needs curing you cannot do without curing because the basic the fundamental premises of concrete is that it has to take the compressive strength and when it takes the compressive strength there is going to be an element of shrinkage there so curing has to be there of course, there are uh, self-curing plasters which has been developed, but then self-curing plasters are those plasters or uh, wherein you know you add some kind of uh, chemical into it to retain water. But uh, as of now, we don't have any kind of cement that is given for structural applications, uh, wherein you know one can advise that you do not do curing. So curing has to be done. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali, for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had a lot of questions coming to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, yes, nice to see because the yes, same sir. set of questions keeps coming. No? Whenever we go, as you would be aware. <laughs> You know, since the time we yeah. are there in this industry, the same kind of, unfortunately or fortunately, there was no question on cracks, which is the major <laughs> challenge, you know. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 
Yes, sir. We have come to an end, uh, end of this interesting, uh, very interesting topic. Uh, topic what we have chosen was the right yes, one, sir. like choosing the right cement based on application. Actually, see, okay. basically, what happens? Uh, uh, this particular topic uh, has to be, I think, done at a frequent level because engineers has to be made aware because one type of cement they take it and start using it for the entire type of structures, whatever, wherever it is actually. So. Uh, True, in true sense, there should be a create an awareness. The type of cement, actually, you know, based on applications, different type of. As you told in one of the slides, I was a little uh, happy to see that one. That one in a particular residential structure itself, you have four or five type of applications coming into the different types of cements can be used actually based on the application. So, the engineers has to start thinking uh, based on the type of applications, what type of cements are available in the market. And uh, what is the uh, uh, the type of uh, the structure where he is he is doing it actually, and he has to open up and put it across to the consumers actually, because most of the time the consumers are not uh, technically qualified, and as engineers we have to make them aware that these are the cements, uh, what this type of applications has to be used actually for giving the better output actually. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, bringing out this topic and uh, creating an awareness among the engineers. And uh, I hope you will come up with a better, more and more such type of uh, uh, coming up topics, actually. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Qcrete India and engineer Shelly Fernandez and engineer Kaushika, as well as Indian Concrete Institute, Mangalore Center, my dearest colleague, uh, engineer Anil Baliga, for uh, <laughs> spearheading this initiative. Thank you so much. Uh, so I thank, nice uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I thank Anil Palika uh, and uh, the entire team members of Indian Content Institute, Mangalore, for supporting Qcrete for uh, coming out with good topics actually. And uh, we are able to put it across to the audience. And I hope our audience are also happy to. Uh, you can see the strength, it is increasing day by day actually as the uh, webinars are progressing. And people, all the audience are also taking out time out actually coming and attending to this topic, which is encouraging us to put us more interesting topic in future action. So thank you very much, Mangalore team, ICA Mangalore team, and also Kaushika, Director of Technical, and Anjali for uh, uh, successfully conducting this particular this webinar. I thank all the audience, all the participants who have come out on a uh, on today at this late hours to attend this stupid webinar. I, Shelly Fernandez, uh, MD, stupid ready mix. Thank you, all of us, all of you. Thank you very much. You. Yes, Baliga, you want to tell, add something? No, no. Actually, uh, this is this uh, today's program is a bonus for Mangalorians. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Normally, I, I, we we. We don't miss Anil sir's uh, talk at uh, Mangalore during Engineers Day. That's on uh, September 15th or somewhere one week here and there at Mangalore. And uh, so this year we'll have we'll, we we had one bonus talk. Thank you, Anil sir. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah, you. But sir, this topic you. topic was very good based on the based cement based on applications actually, which most of the engineers are actually not thinking it thinking in that direction. So that is the importance of this today's topic, actually. So thanks a lot for bringing out this particular concept. And I think we have to propagate. And this will also go into go long way in Redmix also, because we are also trying to educate the customers that depending on the structures, depending on the environment conditions, we have to use different cements or different blending. All these things have to be taken more and more depth, actually, into the engineer's mind. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. So we can sign off. Thank you, Anjali. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.